All right. So it is important that we learn how to, you know, design research. So let's look at the research designs. That's where we, oh, oh, that's what we need to talk about. So research design by definition, it does refer to the plan to collect the information to address your research question, okay? The plan to collect information to address your research question, that is research design, okay? There should be that plan that you set on how you're going to collect the information that should be there to answer your question, your research problem that you are providing the solutions. So there is that question, the research question or the research uh, problem. It needs information for it to be, yeah, to be sorted out. And for you to solve that problem, you need this information. Now, there is that plan that you set so that you can manage to collect the data and uh, you collect the data, you have the information that you may be able to answer your question. It is what is called the research design. Is that clear? Yes. So basically, you will in the research design, you will have the procedures that are used to collect your data. How are you going to collect your data? That is very important. And how you are going to analyze the data, that is important too to understand that it is important for you to analyze the data, but how are you going to analyze the data? And uh, what spheres are you going to use? What uh, statistical packages are you going to use? Are you going to use R? Are you going to use statistics? Are you going to, whatever you are going to use. So that is very, very crucial. And it's very important in, in, in data analysis. So you need, you, need, you need to tell us how you're going to analyze that data after collecting it in the research design. Okay. So the major design categories for scientific research are experimental designs and the observation designs, okay? Yeah. The experimental designs and the, the observation designs Designs. These are the categories of these research designs. So you'll understand that your plan should actually make clear. It has to make clear what your research question is. That is in your research plan. You should be aware the research plan is, uh, the research question is also called the research question, uh, research problem, sorry. So what theories will be considered? What are some of the key concepts? What hypotheses are you setting? What are your independent variables and what are your dependent variables? What are some of the definitions of the same variables? What units of analysis are you going to use? And what is statistical analysis are you going to use? I mean, the, the statistical packages that you're going to use to analyze the data. So basically, these are some of the things that are contained in the research plan or research design. Your question or your problem has to be clear, right? The mm -hmm. theories that are there to support your problem that it indeed exists, they have to be there. I talked about theories last time. Mm -hmm. There should be some key concepts, okay? And the hypotheses, these are the statements, okay, that have been there. And mm -hmm. you have to tell us among the variables that you're going to use, which ones are independent variables and which one will be the dependent variable? Mm -hmm. For example, the same question that we are looking at, mm -hmm. we talked about the question of um, the, the, the impact of some variables on earnings or the determinants of earnings. We talked about the variable earning and said that the variable earning is a dependent variable because it is the one that is being determined in the model. Yes. But the independent variables are those variables that are there to explain it, that are there to influence it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in your research design, you have to tell us clearly which ones are independent variables and which one are the dependent variables. 
you should be clear on how you're going to analyze this data. And again, it is important to notice that this plan, of course, the design should also address the strengths and the weakness of your particular design. How strong mm -hmm. is your design? What are some of its weaknesses? Because every design, it gives it as pressure. Like there are some problems or the, 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 there are some of the things that it does not address. So you have to tell us, okay, that my you know design does not address this issue. There is this particular weakness about this particular um, research design. Okay, when you look at the overview of the research process, we can think of research as starting with a problem, then a research question, okay, moving to an attempt to provide an answer to that problem by developing a theory. This, I'm, I'm just now repeating the same things if you followed. Yeah. Right. We are finding the problem. What is it that is a problem? What is wrong? Identify what is wrong. Identify what is the problem. That is called your research question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you find the solutions or the answers to the problem by developing a field. Mm -hmm. So now, for you to know how good the theory is you will have to put it to one or more tests you have to test these theories okay mm -hmm. yeah that is known as empirical uh, empirical literature review this is where you 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 review how the test has been tested okay this same theory like how how it has been tested how many number of tests has it gone through so in short, we are saying that these theories, before you accept them, you have to subject them mm -hmm. to a test. Now, to test the theory, we deduce one or more hypotheses from the theory. Right. The statements mm -hmm. that should be true if the theory accurately depicts the world, those are called the hypotheses. Those statements that should be true if the theory accurately depicts the world. Okay. Oh, okay. Those statements are called the now hypothesis. So we test those hypotheses by systematically observing the world. The empirical end of the scientific method, that is what it is called. We systematically observe the world. Now, the observation. The observations that you make, they allow you to accept or to reject your hypothesis. That mm -hmm. is by providing insights into the accuracy and the value of your theory. Those observations mm -hmm. are conducted according to a plan or a research design. Mm -hmm. Those observations that you're going to make, they will allow you to either accept or reject the hypothesis, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> right? Now, yes. once you have detected that, you will understand that these observations, they are conducted, okay, according to a plan or a research design. The research design should tell us exactly how we are going to conduct this research. That is very important. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. What? You should not now, when it comes to the issue of internal and external validity of the research design, you should not that not all designs are created equally. There are basically some trade-offs okay. we make when opting for one type of design over another. Mm -hmm. Okay? So not yeah. all those designs are created equally. You have to trade off. That is to say, you have to choose, okay, between them. Since they are not equal, these research designs, you have to say, okay, I will choose this one because of this and this. Of course, there should be some reasons as to why you are choosing that particular design. Now, the <laughs> two major components of an assessment of a research design 
are its internal validity and its external validity. Before you choose this yeah. research design, you have to examine the validity of the research design. By internal validity, we mean that uh, we can make a causal statement within the context of the study. Mm -hmm. That is to say, we can see that the independent variables are there to cause um, the dependent variable behave in that particular way it does behave. Oh, okay. In a simpler words, we can say that the causal statement means that we are the, the, we are able to show that these independent variables are impactive in the model. Like they mm -hmm. have some impact on the variable in question. Mm. Now, to make that statement, we need to satisfy the conditions of causality that we identified previously. There are those uh, statements of causality, the conditions of measuring mm -hmm. whether uh, one variable causes or has an influence on the other variable. Okay, mm -hmm. we have to test them. Okay. So the major challenge is the issue of the spuriousness that I talked about last time. I said with yeah. the spuriousness, it means that, you know, the, the, dependent, the independent variables are not impactful to the model, but when you run your regression, your regression seems, shows the fake results, you know, fake results. Yes. But, mm -hmm. you know, there's these uh, variables that do not have, you know, influence to the model mm -hmm. or to the dependent variable. But when you run your regression, they seem as if they have an impact, which is not actually true. So that is the problem that we are talking about. Okay. Now, the second basis for evaluating your research design is to assess the external validity. Mm -hmm. That is we can generalize the results of our study. Are we able to generalize the results of the study? Are these findings applicable in other settings? Okay, that is what we mean by external validity. When you research yourself, you find out that, okay, this is like this. Are you sure your results can still be used in other areas? That's mm -hmm. why I told you last time that when you conduct a research, you have to give us empirical evidence of where the research was done, how many mm -hmm. times it was done, by who, mm -hmm. so that we see that if that research just works well with Zambians, we should know at all. These findings, they, they are just for Zambians. They are not for mm -hmm. other people. Yes. These other results are not, you know, for Black people. Or it mm -hmm. just holds onto the black people, but for the whites, it doesn't hold. We have to find out. That is what we mean. So when you choose the design, it should be able to help us generalize the results of the study. Okay? Mm -hmm. That is what we mean. So now, when you try to combine with the other factors, replication is actually a key to demonstrate external validity. By replication, we mean, mm -hmm. are we able to test this test somewhere there and have the similar results? Can we carry out this test among the black people? Can you conduct it among the Chinese and have the same result? Can we take it among the, the whites and have the same thing? Okay, that is the, the point that we are talking about. Okay, yes. let's look at the classification of research design, the major classes of research designs now. Yes. There are many ways to classify systematic scientific research designs, but the most common approach is to classify them as experimental and observational, the okay. classes of the research designs. Yes. The main classifications are experimental and the observation. Okay. Now, now, when you talk about experimental designs, these are most easily thought of as a standard laboratory experiment. 
So in an experiment design, the researcher controls holds constant, that is to say, as many variables as possible, and then assigns subjects to groups, usually at random. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of science here. Let me show you a little bit of science. If you are conducting an experimental research uh, to see how a potted plant, you know potted plants, those plants that you put in pots? Yes. To see how the potted plant react with light. Mm -hmm. There is that experiment where you can put it maybe in a carton box. Then you mm -hmm. open one of the carton boxes. Mm -hmm. You open it to some area and you put it where light can enter. Mm -hmm. Then the other carton box, you mm -hmm. just close it. You allow mm -hmm. maybe light not to enter or maybe you just allow light to come. Of course, I've said that the first carton box, you can just see create only one entrance of light. Then the second one, mm -hmm. you can create main entrances of light. Okay? Mm -hmm. You have these potted plants. Mm -hmm. So let's say, okay, let me draw like this. These are the potted plants. You cover it like this. There is, there is this mm -hmm. plant. This is a carton box. There is light coming from one direction. How does mm -hmm. this plant behave? You see that mm -hmm. this plant will bend towards light because That's this true. light is, is coming only one direction. Mm -hmm. Then there is this one, which is called a control experiment, which has mm -hmm. got a light coming from all directions. Mm -hmm. The light rays are coming from all directions. You can see mm -hmm. that this plant will be upward and straight, right? It will not bend anywhere, isn't it? Yes. It's, a, it's a little bit of science now. So which mm -hmm. one is a control or a constant uh, experiment? There is this one, which, which is going to show us the desired result, this one. Like when everything is normal, at least mm -hmm. the plant should be upward, meaning you hold mm -hmm. the other factors constant. Then mm -hmm. what if, we just create one entrance of light. Mm -hmm. We want to examine now what happens. Mm -hmm. the, what we know, the normal is this one. Yes. Now mm -hmm. let's try to examine what happens later on. So this one where we, we, we need two plants, of course, to see the difference. Okay? We need the one that is receiving light from both ends. That is called a control experiment. Then we also need okay. the other one, okay? which is mm -hmm. called an observational one, where you are observing what happens that wrong. Mm -hmm. So basically that's how you conduct a research. I mean, the okay. experimental research. I just wanted to make you understand uh, what we mean by experimental research. Okay. Now, All right. if you, this randomization works, that is, mm -hmm. if it will, um, that is, and it, to, if the size uh, is large enough, but technically that means that the size is infinite. Then the two mm -hmm. groups are identical. So what the point means is that we deal with the different groups of uh, sizes of data or the samples. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's some time when you have a large sample or the times when you have those small samples. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you, you can just use the same levels of sample sizes, then most of the times you are likely to produce similar results or identical results. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the researcher then will manipulate the experimental treatment, that is the independent variables, so that one group is exposed to it and then the others are not. I gave you the example of that plant. One plant is exposed to all the variables, that is to all light. Uh, light is coming in a balanced way, then the other one is not balanced. That is what we meant that one group is exposed, the other one is not uh, exposed. So we are holding some factors constant. We'll show you how to do that uh, technically. 
So okay. the dependent variable is then observed. We are checking the, 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 the behavior of the dependent variables. Mm -hmm. Make clear what you say. You have the earnings. Mm -hmm. I'm using the same example so that you may understand. What yeah. variables do we have? We have we, we chose age, we chose gender, right? Yes. Yes. We chose the work experience. Yeah, we chose education. Mm -hmm. So now there is there are these nodes. There is this constant that we have, which is called a beta naught plus mm -hmm. beta one plus beta two. Mm -hmm. plus beta three. These mm -hmm. are the coefficients uh, of these uh, variables. Mm -hmm. So now holding constant simply means that there is this value here, which is beta naught. We assume mm -hmm. that all these variables are zeros or you hold them constant. Then it mm -hmm. means that when these other variables do not change, earnings will be constant by this, which means that regardless of the age, regardless mm -hmm. of the gender, Regardless of the work experience, the person can get at least the beta not amount. Mm -hmm. Then now the issue of holding the variables constant, what we mean is that but when you have uh, beta one, let's say you have beta one, you want to see the impact of age, right? You have mm -hmm. to hold these other factors constant. Forget about them. When you're interpreting, you say holding other factors constant. If a person okay. has, in, has increased in age, like has grown by one unit, then mm -hmm. the earnings will grow by what? By beta one units. Mm -hmm. That's how you interpret. Mm -hmm. Meaning of held these other factors, what? Constant. If mm -hmm. you want to interpret on gender, you can say when you hold all other factors constant, other variables like earning, uh, like age, uh, work experience, education, then if a person is male, then mm -hmm. their probability of earnings shall increase by what? By beta mm -hmm. two units. Mm -hmm. You get the point? Yes. Then when you are interpreting on work, on work experience, you can say, holding other factors constant. If a person has increased the, the, their years in work experience, then earnings will increase by beta three what? Beta three units. Mm -hmm. This is what we mean by holding other factors constant. We assume these other variables are not what are not there. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we ex we 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 examine the impact of one variable. See how much mm -hmm. power it has on the dependent variable. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, you'll be happy when we get there. Yeah. So <laughs> this is where we are going. So in mm -hmm. other words, the conditions that need to be satisfied. To demonstrate causality can be made with an experimental design. It is That's unfortunate right. to learn that in the social sciences, the artificiality of the experimental setting often creates suspect external validity. So usually in social sciences, it's a little bit different and a little bit difficult to do experiments. Mm -hmm. Now, Consider a study that seeks to understand the effects of a new story on views towards climate change through an experiment. So a good researcher will do things that minimize the artificiality of the setting, but external validity will often remain suspect. That is to say, we will always not be sure about the impact of these results, we can we cannot really generalize the results, okay? Still, we can be skeptical, like, are these results applicable to everyone around? Observational designs now. So the observational designs, they tend to have the opposite strengths and weaknesses. Usually in an observational design, the researcher cannot control who is exposed to the experimental treatment. Therefore, there is no random assi assignment and there is no control. That is what happens in observation. Like there is nothing like, uh, uh, the, you don't have the control experiment, you get. 
that is what yes. happens under observation. You have no experimental treatment. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Does smoking cause heart diseases? Is the question. So a researcher might approach that research question by collecting detailed medical and lifestyle histories of a group of subjects. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if there is a correlation between those who smoke and heart disease, can we conclude a causal relationship? That's a question. Can we really say that smoking causes heart diseases? Mm -hmm. So generally, the answer to that question is no. We cannot really say that, uh, you know, smoking only causes heart diseases. Only. Because any other difference between the two groups is an alternative explanation, meaning that the relationship might be spurious. Mm. You, might, you might find the other groups of people that might be smoking, but they don't have those heart diseases. Mm -hmm. You might still have other people that don't smoke, but they have heart diseases. So now that's a question of causality. So now, for better or worse, though there are fewer threats to external validity because of the natural research settings, that's what usually happens under observational research. Now, a specific type of the observational design, it is the natural experiment. The natural experiment requires the mentioned because they are increasingly used to great value nowadays, what we call the natural experiments. In a natural experiment, subjects are exposed to different environmental conditions that are outside the control of the researcher. But the process governing exposure to the different conditions arguably resembles random assignment. So whether, for example, is an environmental condition that arguably mimic random assignment or not. So that is what usually happens. Maybe let me try to make it uh, a little bit more clear. Okay. In a natural experiment, what you do, you subject these different uh, groups to different uh, environmental conditions. For example, you want to examine only what motivates the people at the places of work. You will expose people, your group, you divide people in gro different groups. You want to experiment. Others, you get them, you increase their salaries and check if they are going to be more motivated. Mm -hmm. Others, you will not increase their salaries, right? And see. You want to see the impact. Who is more impacted? You get other variables again. Uh, others, you just mm -hmm. improve their working conditions. Then to others, you don't improve. Mm -hmm. What if others, mm -hmm. you improve the working, you don't improve the working conditions, just improve the salaries. Or you leave the salaries constant, but you improve the other working environment around them. Mm -hmm. How does that motivate them? So you can try to adjust as many variables as possible in observational research, but all of them you are subjected them to different conditions and then you'll be able to generalize. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Let us imagine a natural experiment where one part of Lusaka gets a lot of rain on election day, whereas another part gets almost no rain. Mm -hmm. The researchers do not control the weather but they might argue that patterns of rain are basically random at the very least. This is a non-dependent variable in the model. Mm -hmm. This variable, it is not determined within the model. That is what it means to be exogenous. That is uh -uh. to say we have no control of that mm -hmm. variable. Now, if you buy this argument, then you might use this as a natural experiment to, ex to estimate the impact of weather conditions on voter turnout. Mm -hmm. Now, because the experiment takes place in a natural setting, external validity mm -hmm. is less of a problem because this is a natural mm -hmm. setting. 
-hmm. But since we do not have control over all e events, we may still have internal validity what questions. Now, let's have the threads to validate it. What are some of the threads to validate it? To understand the pros and the cons of various designs and to be able to better judge specific designs, we need to identify specific threads to internal and external validity. Right. right. So it is important to note that primary challenge to establishing internal validity in social sciences is the fact that most of the phenomena we care about have multiple causes and are often a result of some complex set of interaction. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm repeating the point. The challenge that we find usually in the in, in social sciences when we want to establish internal validity, it mm -hmm. is that most of the phenomena, the events that we care about, they have mm -hmm. a lot of causes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they are often as a result of the complex set of interactions between the variables. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that eh, the same example of earnings. We cannot mm -hmm. say that eh, education impacts your earning. Like what determines how much someone should earn is just only education. Why shouldn't we conclude mm -hmm. like that? There are many other variables that eh, affect mm -hmm. what? Earnings. We yeah. mentioned the age, we mentioned the gender, we mentioned what, we mentioned work experience, among others. So now, the multiple like multiple causation simply means there are many variables impacting that variable. And the interactive effects make it very difficult for us to demonstrate causality both internally and externally. There is now a summary here that is tabulated. Okay. Okay, on the threads of validity, of internal validity. Mm -hmm. Number one, we have history. So any event that occurs while the experiment is in progress might be an alternative explanation using a control group who mitigates um, using a control group that mitigates this concern. That is to say, you know, when you are researching, you have to care about the history, what happened during the research, okay? Like yes. what was the setup uh, during that time? What was really happening? That is very important. Because if you don't care about the history, we may generalize the results forgetting that the history itself was not favorable. For mm -hmm. example, if you want to understand the, 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 what's this? You want to understand maybe how inflation is behaving, the, price, the general mm -hmm. price level. Mm -hmm. We can just say, okay, inflation has what impact on GDP, but history is very important because you have to check what was the time period. In the times of COVID, when people were not able to, when borders were closed, you found that most of the countries that are importing, they found it very difficult to order things. And the internal things, the things that they saw became very expensive. So you cannot generalize that, they, you know, there were a lot of high prices. There was because you have to go back to the history and look at how that variable was affected by the other events around. Mm -hmm. The other threat is maturation. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is to yeah. say the normal changes over time, they might affect the dependent variable. Mm -hmm. So using a control group that mitigates this concern. Mm -hmm. So you find that there are some changes that occur with passage of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Time really is a very good factor and it does affect. Mm -hmm. Selection bias is another threat. So if you, you rando, uh, if you, randomization is not used to assign participants, the groups might not be equivalent. Mm -hmm. Like the representation 
how were you selecting the the samples you know yes. those the, that data that you used how did mm -hmm. you collect it how mm -hmm. did you select the samples mm -hmm. so that is what we mean by selection bias as long as you are biased in the way how you are selecting then we have a problem mm -hmm. to the issue when it comes to internal validity mm -hmm. experimental mortality is one of the threats as well. That is to say, if groups lose participants, okay, they may not be equivalent. Mm -hmm. That is to say, if these groups, they start losing, for example, mm -hmm. maybe due to dropping out of the experiment, like you find that the other participants are no longer the same in terms of the number, mm -hmm. then we have a problem. Mm -hmm. Internal validity may not hold. Mm -hmm. Testing. Now, a pretest may confound the influence of the experimental treatment using a control group that mitigates the concern. So, like, uh, when you test, for example, previously, it can uh, it can help you understand the impact of this variable on this on the other variable so sometimes when you uh, you mm -hmm. test already you already know what is most likely to be the outcome mm -hmm. so sometimes what happens because we already know what is most likely to be the outcome what do you do we generalize like okay mm -hmm. even right now this is what is going to happen you get it mm -hmm. now instrumentation is another threat so the changes or the differences in the process of measurements, they might alternatively account for the difference. Like when you are keeping on changing the processes, okay? When you are changing the, uh, the, the, the measurements that you use, that can still bring in the problem. It can affect the internal validity. Statistical mm -hmm. regression. So the natural tendency for extreme scores to regress or move towards the mean and that is what usually happens. So even when we are regressing as well, we still have the other traits and the other problems. Yeah. Now, what about internal validity? What is it that threatens internal validity? Mm -hmm. Number one is testing as well. Pre-testing or multiple measures, they may influence subsequent measurements. That usually happens. Mm -hmm. Even the interaction with, the, with, with, with testing, so you see that the pretest may mm -hmm. sensitize subjects to the effects of the experimental treatment. Mm -hmm. So when you, you when you pretest, like that's testing in advance, this actually may sensitize the subjects to the effects of the experimental treatment. We can have an idea mm -hmm. of what is going to come out. And the, most of the times we generalize the result. Sample representation. So an, an represented sample will limited. Okay. If you have an represented sample, this will actually limit our ability to draw dependable conclusions. Because if you don't properly sample, we will have all that pro those problems around. Now, how is the interaction of the selection bias and the experimental treatment? It is indeed one of the threats. A bias in the selection may produce subjects that are more or less sensitive to the experimental treatment. Mm -hmm. Even this, the, the experimental setting as well, it is a threat to external validity. Mm -hmm. Because this findings, they may not be transferable to the different settings, okay? Mm -hmm. You find that here it holds in the other places, it does not hold. Mm -hmm. Here are some of the common designs now. Okay. The post-test only design, number one. In this design mm -hmm. subject, are randomly assigned to one of two groups, with one group receiving the experimental treatment. Mm -hmm. This is almost the same like the example that I showed you for the plants. 
So there are advantages to this design in that it is relatively inexpensive and mm -hmm. eliminates the threats associated with the pretesting. Mm -hmm. Now, if randomization worked, the pretest measures would be the same. So any differences in the observations would be due to the experimental treatment. So the problem is that randomization could fail us, especially if the sample size is small. Then we also have the other design, which is called the pretest or the post-test design. Mm -hmm. What you notice is that many experimental groups are small and many researchers are not comfortable relying on randomization without experimental verification that the groups are the same. So another common design is the pretest or the post-test design. Mm -hmm. So when you conduct a pretest, okay, you can be sure that the groups are identical when the experiment mm -hmm. begin. That is for the pretest. Mm -hmm. Now the disadvantages are that adding, you know, groups drives the cost up. It's mm -hmm. not cheap to add these groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you keep on adding the, the groups, you'll have a problem. Mm -hmm. Now, a final experimental design deals with all the drawbacks of the previous two by combining them into what is called now the Solomon four group design. The concerns of the previous two designs are dealt with in the design, but the actual analysis is actually complicated most of the times. So mm -hmm. this design is very, very expensive most of the times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, that is what you do. There is also the type where you do the repeated measures or longitudinal research design. With the repeated mm -hmm. observations, this is where uh, the repeated observations are made over time. And at some point, there mm -hmm. is actually an intention intervention and then subsequent observations are made later on again mm -hmm. now the selection bias and test the threats are obvious the concerns with the with the design mm -hmm. so what happens is that you keep on repeating the same experiment okay under repeated measure the longitudinal research design you get this you test you have the same results pack get again retest you have the same results they keep on uh, trying out, uh, doing the same thing and ensuring that you're getting the same results. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is what usually happens. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some of the plan that meets reality? Especially a final mm -hmm. note on research design. Research design is a process of linking together all the elements of your research project. Mm -hmm. None of the elements can be taken in isolation, but must mm -hmm. all come together to maximize your ability to speak to your theory. Mm -hmm. While maximizing internal and external validity within the constraints of your time and budget, mm -hmm. that is what has to be done. Now, the planning process is not straightforward. It is not. And additionally, okay. there is no single right way to design a piece of research to address your research problem. Mm -hmm. So the different scholars for a variety of reasons would end up with quite different designs for the same research problem. Mm -hmm. And now the design, yeah. they can include the trade-offs. You have to trade off. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, you can have the issues of internal and external validity mm -hmm. and, there's some, and there's some compromises that are based on time, resources, opportunities mm -hmm. around, among others. Mm -hmm. Do you now have any questions?